What's going on, Garage Gang? Matt from Garage MC here. Guys, today's video, I wasn't even going to film this, but I started using this tool, and yes, I bought other ones too to try out my options to see if it was a little bit easier, but this is what worked the best, and I figured I'd make a, it's going to just be a quick video, guys, to show you how this tool works. That's it. So, you guys know the 350X build. If you don't, here's the tank right here. Um, they didn't come with all these extra contours here from the factory or these little knee dents or anything like that So 350x tank to buy one that's in nice shapes pretty expensive. So Figured you know what? Let's go ahead and fix this one the inside of this tank looks really clean So it's actually worth fixing if I can get you a shot in there No, I'll have to get you light but, Or you can just take my word for it So I went to Harbor Freight and bought this Chicago electric stud welding kit um yes i tried these little cheap amazon ones they suck and i was going to send it back but it kind of came with this cool little hammer and these little uh punches for if you get too high of a spot you could tap it back in but before we tackle that tank and possibly cost ourselves hundreds close to a thousand dollars for another one yes that's what really nice tanks are going for you guys know we got that 86 ATC 200X. That tank, however, cannot be saved. It is paper thin, rotted out, holes everywhere on it. So, you know, figured let's let's grab a tank that's decent, but maybe has dents that we can get for cheap because those tanks are not cheap either. So, stay tuned. Let's check it out. So, before we look at this 200x tank that i got which the reason why yes i'm going to give it my best effort to repair that but um that's going to be my practice for this uh, i've mentioned this before i grew up in my dad's body shop so i kind of have an idea of what i need to do um uh, you know grew up like i was always hanging out there i wasn't like born in the paint booth or anything um so this little cheap Amazon one, let's talk about this first. So, it comes with all these little tips, and as you can see, I tried. That's hot glue. Uh, I tried the hot glue that they give you with the little cheesy Chinese hot glue gun. That didn't work, so then I busted out my little battery-powered um, hot glue gun to see if maybe that would help with a better glue. Um, no, this was like 37 bucks. This, I'm sorry, got to point the camera at it, Matt. Uh, this was like 37 bucks on Amazon. Um, basically, you clean off, you know, your metal, get it ground down, which you're going to have to do anyway, and then you hot glue this to it, and then this slides into this aluminum piece here. These feet are somewhat adjustable, and then you pop the dent. Well, you could probably guess what happens. All it does is pop the piece back off, and then you're left with hot glue. If it stuck to the tank as well as it stuck to these pieces, probably wouldn't be too bad. But, yeah. So, you know, there's that. I guess I could use these little aluminum things for something now that I have a mini lathe. You guys haven't been paying attention to the channel. Uh, yes, I've already been throwing some respectable chips with this thing. Anyway, that's not what this video is about. So, this at Harbor Freight was 99 bucks. That's, you know, even without the discount club and all that stuff. So what comes in there is obviously the gun, comes with a slide hammer, and it comes with a different tip, two different tips. So this tip is for the thicker studs here, thicker in diameter, see that? And then the thinner ones here. So obviously you use whatever tip goes with the stud that you're using. You put the tip in the tip of the gun. You put a stud in there. You obviously plug it in and then you push this down i'll show you guys when we get it to the tank and then you squeeze this button and it zzz, zaps it to the tank so this tank both sides look exactly the same they're both dented identical um it's gonna be a little hard to get you a shot but you can see like see the curve of the sticker that's why i left it on there so you guys could see what's going on it's uh it's got a dent here it's got a dent here um we got a dent here this is too small of a dent um but i'm going to try it anyway if i can get you guys a shot sunlight's kind of messing me up there you go 
So I started doing it on this side, and then I put etching primer on there and just hit it with a, a block so you could see this whole piece here was caved in like all the way up to here. So that popped right back into shape. I got a little bit left to go on it. There was a dent here, which came out a pretty good amount. Obviously, it's still going to need filler. You know, it's not going to come out dead perfect. I got a little low spot here, but that'll be something for filler. It's kind of tiny. I, I might give it a shot. I don't know, but let's uh, set this up. And then I'll show you guys pulling out a couple dents. And we'll end the video. That's all this video is going to be, man. Just in case you guys were looking at one of these and you're like, damn, is it really worth a hundred bucks? Yeah, it's worth it. Let's do it. Before I uh, get to using this stud gun, guys, let me tell you what I'm going to be uh, doing in preparation to, to use it. So, obviously, i got to get the tank down to bare metal, um, you know, because it's going to weld it to itself. Uh, I'm going to use my heat gun. I'm going to peel this sticker off because if you just leave it on there and then use the grinder, the, the um, disc gets clogged up with the glue and the sticker and all that stuff. So, I'm going to peel that off, and then I'm going to take my die grinder with a 80-grit uh, wheel on it. <laughs> And, or I'm sorry, angle grinder, and I'm going to uh, take down this side of the tank, and then we'll pick up, and I'll show you guys how to um, how to weld the stud on. It's very simple, and we'll pull out a couple dents and see what we get. All right, I got that sticker removed and ground down. Maybe you guys, this will maybe show you the dent a little bit better, but I mean, you know, you can see how that side looks, and look at that side. It's like like a small shark took a bite out of it or something so this whole section that whole section is the whole dent there you go you guys can see the, the light reflection now that's like it's pretty bad please pardon me for being captain obvious for a minute but i kind of have to say this because you know no disrespect but some people out there are friggin' idiots listen we're using a stud welder kit stud welding gun it's gonna weld a stud to the metal gas tank gas tank so you're gonna want to make sure that you properly flush your tank before you do this don't be the guy sitting in the room at the er listening to all the er doctors laughing at you in the other room talking about how i don't know what happened but I went to weld a stud on my tank that was half full of race gas, and uh, there's pieces of it stuck in my chest now. Don't be that guy, all right? I mean, kind of if you want, and probably make for a good story, viral video, who knows. But, it, you know, in the ER if you're lucky. So anyway, all right. Now that I got the obvious BS out of the way, um, let's weld a stud on this thing and see, what we can, see where we can get. You're going to need more than one, by the way. It's not going to just... And be perfect, you know. So after messing around with all the lights in here and trying to get you guys a decent view, so step one: take your new stud welder kit out of the box. Read your directions if you're somebody who didn't know to wrench your gas tank out before welding to it. And you're gonna want to go ahead and plug it in. This goes into regular 110. You're going to want to, in the box, choose the correct tip that you want for the size stud you're using. Then you're going to grab a stud. Insert stud into gun. Ready to go. So, I'd like to go where the dent seems the deepest. So, I'm going to start maybe here. I want to start pulling it out here first and see how well it wants to pop back so when you put this on here the the tip of this is going to depress this larger portion is what grounds out the gun to the part that you're welding to and then when you get it to that point you press this and you only hold it for like two seconds so get this here get it depressed one two just like that Yes. All right, so now that that's welded on, we're going to take the slide hammer that comes in this tool. So this tool here, the stud we just welded in is gonna go into the end there. There is a, like a cam style lock. So being we're going to be pulling it this way, we want to roll this back towards us, get these little knurled teeth stuck on the stud and then pull it so it locks it. 
and we'll see where we get here. So, gonna put this on, gonna roll the lock back, make sure we're locked. Now it's kind of like, you know, pulling against it, so it's pushing it into itself. And being I don't have an extra hand out here, here we go. All right, we'll, we'll stop right there for a second. Now, this wants to get stuck to this stud, so basically you just like that. You want to do it carefully, though, because you can just pop the dent right back in, then you're right where you started. All right, so let me examine this real quick. We'll decide what is the next best location to go with our second stud. So as you guys can see, it is pulling it back out. So I think next we'll go, I kind of like the idea of going around the perimeter. So I think I'm going to go right here next. All right, so like I said, let's try right around here this time. I'm going to go for the deeper spot, um, you know, due to the camera and stuff. You guys can't see, but the way I can see the reflection, the deepest part looks right about here as far as on the perimeter goes. Now the stud lined in there. Get her pushed on. All right. So let's go ahead and see where we can't get here. And right off the bat, guys, I'm already deciding on getting a uh, another um, slide hammer. They they sell one that's like a twist lock, kind of like. Um, uh, kind of like how you put the tip in a Dremel, if you know what I'm talking about. Because this one's kind of a little bit of a pain in the butt with this cam style lock here. But, you know, it'll, it'll work for now. Alright, so. Alright. All right, she's coming along. We're gonna leave our studs on. I'll show you guys how to clip these off too in a minute. So now I wanna maybe try, I'm gonna try right, make about right here. Uh, the thing with this tank is it's, it's curved this way, it's curved this way. There's also a body line that runs along here. Uh, goes to about, where are we at? Goes to about here, all the way to the front of the tank. So, Obviously, I want to keep that, too. This one, actually, on the other side, started popping back out very nicely. So, I'm going to go right about here now. You guys remember Cable Guy? That's your sweet spot right there. So, we're going to grab another stud. We're going to load another one in the gun. And we're going to go right there. So, and I mean, I guess you could weld it on a certain angle maybe might help it out as well i uh, haven't tried that yet it's been uh kind of going according to plan so far which is very unusual very very unusual around here for stuff to go according to plan but all right get in there and roll our lock back so I'll just show you this one, and then I'll do the rest myself, and I'll show you where I get to, um, like off camera, I'll pull the rest out and show you guys where we land. So. Alright, wow, see that's, that's already coming right back to where it's supposed to be. Metal kind of has a memory to it, so um, yeah, you could stretch it. You know, and then it'll be too much metal for it to go back to its original shape. Therefore, then you'd want to leave it a little lower than where it should be. Then you could, you know, do your body work from there. That one came off nice and easy. All right, sorry to get the hang of it. Maybe I won't need a new one. Although I do not like the way that that locks. All right, so this whole section here is starting to really come around. You guys can, I don't know if you guys can see that with the lighting, but I'll get you a better view in a minute. 
All right, so I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna continue doing what I'm doing, and then I'll pick back up and show you guys where we land. All right, so I figured I'd stop here real quick and show you because I need to remove some of these so I can get more towards the center here, but you guys can see what direction I was going here. And if you remember when we were looking down on this tank, you could see the bulge over here. Look at that, it's starting to come back over here, man. So what I had also done was I took a straight edge and I took a Sharpie marker and just marked right about where that line is on there. Um, you guys can see that reflection like totally changed. If you remember what it looked like before, um, I will try and screenshot it and show you. So you guys, the lights in the same spot, tanks in the same spot. So the reflection should look the same. Uh, I'm looking for my dikes so I can clip those off. I'm in the middle of, uh, wiping my welding helmet off because today we have the total eclipse and I'd like to look at it. Shouldn't look at it bare eyed though. Always use your welding helmet. So, um, those are not the snips I'm looking for. I'm looking for, looking for my dikes. Whoa, what are you just doing? Come on, give me these. This is the shit that goes on in this garage, I'll tell you. All right, let me show you how to clip. I'm sorry, I couldn't resist. Let me uh, show you how to clip these off real quick and then uh, I will continue doing what I was doing. Best way I've found to do this yet. Para, para, para dikes, or I'm sorry, um, wire snips if you're um, a sensitive baby like most people these days. You can't take a joke. Go ahead and unsubscribe because there'll be plenty more jokes like that on my channel. Just go ahead and twist it off. These are now trash. Uh, can't use them again. So, go ahead and step on that later. Um, I like to try and grab it all the way down to the base. And I'm not squeezing this to cut it off. I'm just squeezing it and then trying to twist. Because whatever gets left behind, you will have to grind off. So, it kind of leaves a little, little nub or whatever you want to call it there. Um, I don't think there's any of these that I need to leave. I like everything pretty much where it's going there's a little tiny low spot right here but I think this is uh coming out better than I planned not as much BS as I thought there was gonna be yes it's still gonna require body work like I said but you know can't be can't be riding around with a, a dented tank man can't be doing that you know how can I call myself garage MC if I'm riding around with a busted ass bike you know what I mean I guess it could be worse. It could be like a 465EX that I never finished. <clears throat> By the way, 465EX engine is for sale on eBay. Check it out if you can find it. All right, so that's how you cut those off with paradikes. And um, all right, now I'm going to get back to continuing pulling the rest of this out. Well, let's go ahead and just take a look at the reflection. Yeah, you can see there's high and low spots now, but don't forget where I ground that down, that whole white line around there, that was pushed in all the way to that point. So, you know, like I said, it doesn't just pop back out and perfect and call it good. You gotta, you gotta work it a little bit, you know what I mean? So, let's see if I can get you guys another angle here. But, you can see she is uh, coming back to shape, man. That was caved in. So, all right, let me continue. Like I said, this is just going to be a quick video. It's probably a little bit longer than I was planning on it being already anyway. Um, just to show you how this gun works. We're not getting into like how to do body work and all that stuff. Like I guess, you know, I'm, I'm not a pro with that stuff. I can get done what I need to get done. But, you know, I just wanted to let you guys see this gun and see it work and stuff like that. And, you know, what it comes with and how much it can actually help you. So what I did was I grinded off most of the studs. Well, I ground them all off, but, you know, not all the way down. I got a couple tiny little high spots right now. I coated it in etching primer and then put a uh, black guide coat over it just so it can come through on camera what we're looking like now. Um, I'm going to handle the rest of this myself. You guys are going to see the tank when it's done. So here's where we're at. So instead of a big caved-in dent, you can see it really started to come back to shape. Yeah, I can keep going, and I probably will. So, you know, we got one, two three four this little area here so five six you know, figure like six or seven more spots that i can do so i'll have to grind that back to bare metal i just wanted to see where i was at but if you guys can see this line that's how big the dent was before now we're 
pretty, pretty damn good as far as how it feels. There's a little deviation there. I will body work the rest of that out and get that nice and smooth. Plus the sticker goes there, uh, but I'm going to try and get it as perfect as I possibly can. Like I said, this is just the practice tank before we move on to our 350X tank. Thank you guys for watching this video, and I'll see you guys in the garage next time. I know we were supposed to powder coat um, our 350X wheels in, in this video, but I had a customer's 400X engine to build, so I had to get that done. Um, I posted a short on it, so if you didn't see the short I posted, go check it out, and uh, I'll see you guys in the garage next time. If you guys could, I'd appreciate it if you throw me a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, smash the subscribe button, man. It's, it's free. It doesn't cost nothing, you know? And uh, we got all kinds of different videos, you know, content like this. So be sure to check it out, man. And I will see you guys in the next video before we end this one. We'll run down our uh, channel members list. So we have Paul Apadula on the 125cc. We got Dennis Brooks uh, as a 250cc member. And we also have Justin Carl Finn Films as a 500cc member. So uh, go down there and check out the, the members board, guys. If you want to hit the join button, that'd be cool. Um, 350X build going to be coming up soon, man. This is just the bag of stuff just for the forks and the front end. Yeah. You guys wonder where a whole bunch of money gets sunk into these builds? Hardware. All the little stuff. See you guys in the next video. Thanks for joining me in the garage today.